guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In case you're new here, my name is Sharon. I create content around my passion for the science of beauty and wellness. In case you're interested, make sure to check out my website and you can sign up to my newsletter for all the updates to come straight to your mailbox. Now, in today's video, I'll be talking about fungal acne. Now, fungal acne is a term I came across early this year, sometime in February, when I was doing a lot of research on skincare. And um, when I found it, suspected highly that this is something I might have, and I talked about it on my Instagram stories. So I've done a lot of research and compiled it in this video. I have left timestamps in the description box so you can skip forward to whichever part that suits you best. And let's get right into it. So first of all, what is fungal acne? The term itself is a misnomer because acne is actually um, used in reference to acne vulgaris, which is the more common term whenever anyone says they have acne or breakouts. And this is a bacterial condition. It's caused by a bacteria called P, P. acnes, while fungal acne is caused by a yeast called malassezia. So the more appropriate term is malassezia folliculitis or pterosporum folliculitis. As I've mentioned, it is caused by the overgrowth of malassezia. Now this malassezia species is the same one that causes dandruff, seborrheic dermatitis, tinea versicolor, among many other um, fungal infections that affect different parts of the body and um, it just affects anywhere that there is a hair follicle. And so this can be caused by many different things um, but one of the potential causes of uh, fungal acne is if you're in an immunocompromised state and not just what this means is that your immunity is low for whatever reason. It could be that you have a long-standing illness like diabetes or HIV, or you've had a bone marrow transplant, or you're on some long-term um, steroids or other immunosuppressive drugs. Um, another cause of fungal acne is if you are on prolonged use of antibiotics. Although this is a more indirect cause of fungal acne, because antibiotics tend to mess with your gut bacteria and that can lead to overgrowth of the yeast. Now other conditions that can promote the growth of malassezia are um, hot and humid climate, um, excessive sweating, so in areas where you're prone to a lot of sweating is where you'll mostly find FA. And so linked to that if you wear occlusive clothing or you sit in your sweaty workout gear for too long or you rewear them without washing them. So all of these can lead to um, increased risk of having a fungal acne. How do you identify fungal acne? So first of all, the pimples tend to be in clusters when compared to acne where you can just have a pimple here, a pimple there. Uh, fungal acne, they tend to be in clusters, so multiple tiny little bumps and um, often they are the same size. You know, your acne can be different sizes. So you'll have big pimples here and tinier pimples there. But with fungal acne, they tend to be more uniform in size. And another thing is they might be itchy. Um, so if you find that your acne is itchy, that could be a clue that it's FA. Something else is you can find it on many places. So it's not just on your face. Um, it can be on your shoulder, on your chest, on your neck, on your back. And so it can be found on many different parts of the body. And lastly, if you've been prescribed acne medication and it doesn't seem to work on it, then it might be fungal acne because I've, as I've mentioned, acne is a bacterial condition, but this is a fungal infection. So the treatment is completely different for these two things. The most accurate way to diagnosis is to go to a dermatologist and then they will do a test where they will just do uh, take a small sample of the area that is um, affected and then they will check and see if there's malassezia in there. Now the issue with this is first, not everyone can afford to go to a dermatologist. Secondly, even if you can, maybe not right now because of Miss Rona. And then uh, third is sometimes the tests can actually come back negative. And that's because like the malassezia colonize the follicle, hence the name malassezia folliculitis. And the follicle is much deeper than 
the sample they take, uh, which they usually take just from the top layer of the skin, which is a stratum corneum. I've talked about this in the skin barrier video that I link above. So it might come back negative and then you don't get treated for it. Another reason why it could be hard to diagnose is because it often occurs in conjunction with acne. So many people who have acne, vulgaris, might also have fungal acne. And so acne vulgaris, first of all, is just in your face. You know, it's more uh, conspicuous. And if you treat for um, acne, most of the treatment revolves around antibiotics or antibacterial drugs, which I mentioned can actually promote fungal acne. So it's kind of tricky to deal with an instance where you have both acne, vulgaris, and fungal acne. But that said, <laughs> um, once you are sure or you suspect you have fungal acne, there are ways to treat it and deal with it. So first you need to figure out the ingredients that you must avoid in your skincare if you have fungal acne. Now, malassezia thrives on fatty acids, oils, and esters. It loves eating oil. And so you'll find that these are ingredients that are found in almost 95, maybe even 98% of all products out there. Um, and it makes it fairly tricky to pick uh, products that can work for you. So, um, and... There are only three oils that are completely fungal acne safe, and that is MCT oil, mineral oil, and squalane oil. If you use any other oils in your routine and you think you have fungal acne or you're sure you have fungal acne, then just be aware that it might be the reason why you still have fungal acne and you're better off switching to the safer options. And this is also why if you tend to have oilier skin, um, you're probably more likely to have fungal acne because you are feeding the malesthesia with your oil. So even if you do not have excessively oily skin, you'll find that the fungal acne will be in your T-zone where your your skin is oilier. Another ingredient that you want to avoid are yeast ferments. So the more popular ones that I've seen is like Saccharomyces and Galactomyces. Galactomyces is the one that has been found to um, promote the growth of malassezia. Um, it's becoming an increasingly popular ingredient, although I can only think of one product, I think it's the Cosar X Galactomyces Tuna or something that uh, has that ingredient and you want to avoid that because you're not trying to promote the growth of the fungal acne. So now you know the ingredients that you need to avoid. So when it comes to the actual treatment of fungal acne, the very first step is to just make sure that you're using fungal acne safe products. Of course it would be great if you could know all these ingredients off head but that is a headache and um, we're not thinking about skincare 24 7 and so thank god that there are people who have put together websites where you can just copy paste an ingredient list of a skincare product you already have or a product that you'd like to buy and once you just copy paste the ingredient list these websites will tell you whether they're fungal acne safe or not. So in my research I found three websites. There's cesia.co. All these will be in the accompanying blog post so don't worry about it. So there's cesia.co, there's folliculitis scout, Dot com and the skin charisma. So all these three you can just copy paste your ingredients list and they'll tell you whether it's fungal acne safe or not and they often specify the actual ingredient that's problematic which is really helpful so that you can just be on the lookout. So if you're planning to buy new products then run through that uh, checklist through either of those websites and then you can purchase. If you currently have products and you don't know whether they're safe or not, then do that and then decide whether you're going to keep them or replace them. Just use them up and then make sure you buy fungal acne safe products moving forward. Then the next step would be to use topical or oral antifungals. So as I've mentioned, it is a fungal infection, so you need an antifungal to treat it. And the most popularly prescribed uh, first step treatment, and it also doubles as a way to confirm that you actually have fungal acne, is to use an anti-dandruff shampoo. And this is because most anti-dandruff, actually all of them, 
uh, have um, a form of antifungal medication in them and remember this malassezia is the same one that causes dandruff so that's why an anti-dandruff shampoo would work and they tend to have um, ketoconazole in them which is one uh, antifungal. Nizoral shampoo is the one that I've seen many people talk about and use and another antifungal that you'll find in a shampoo is selenium sulfide and I think this is the one that you find in Selsun Blue. Uh, shampoo and I think head and shoulders. Now all of these shampoos you can find them in any pharmacy They're over the counter. You don't need a prescription for them or even in a supermarket So all these are topical antifungals and the best way that I've seen that people use them and what most dermatologists tend to tell you to do is you use these shampoos as a mask so it's a rinse off mask you apply it to your clean face so you wash your face first then you apply the shampoo let it sit on your face as a mask for about 10 minutes wash off and then moisturize and do whatever you want with the rest of your skincare so you'll do that twice a week for six weeks to get rid of the infection and then once a week after that to prevent relapse. That's at least one way I've seen people use it. Another like course is that people use it every day for a week and once they confirm that it is the fungal acne because you will notice like a significant improvement then after the seven days, you just ease off and just use it once a week moving forward to keep it at bay. So that's with the antifungal shampoos. Now, the annoying thing with the shampoos, at least the comments that people say, is that they can be fairly drying on the skin. So it's also not something that people want to use long term. Remember, it is a shampoo and most of these shampoos are not sulfate free. So they might have other drying cleansing agents it's quite harsh on the skin so i've also seen some other people use um, cream versions of these antifungals so you just find an antifungal cream that has ketoconazole and you'll find it probably as an athlete's foot cream or prescribed for something else and as long as it has the ketoconazole some people have gotten good results with using a cream instead of the shampoo they say it's less dry but another thing other than the topical antifungals could be oral antifungals now this is depends on your doctor if they decide to prescribe it or not and if this is a case where your fungal acne is just hella resistant it doesn't want to go anywhere so they'll give you um, some oral antifungals as for other topical uh, agents you can use there is sulfur now sulfur is in my opinion one of the most underrated ingredients in the skincare game it is a keratolytic which means it just breaks down the outer layers of the skin it is antibacterial antifungal it kills parasites as well it's really just slitting every single microorganism that messes with your face one by one and you can find find it easily at any uh, pharmacy so the good thing about sulfur first is it's gentler than say like the shampoos it is affordable and accessible and because it has all these benefits if you happen to have both acne and fungal acne then you get two benefits in one since it's both antibacterial and antifungal and so you can just go to a pharmacy and ask them for some sulfur so the only issue with it is it smells it smells like rotten eggs or at least that's what people compare it to um, though it has been incorporated into some store-bought products like you can find some sulfur masks so they've managed to deal with the scent and I'll try and link some of those products I haven't used them myself but yeah you could opt for a store-bought mask that the scent isn't too bad but if you just get the ointment it will not have a great smell. How you use it, um, usually when people start off with sulfur, they will use it as a mask as well, the same way you use your shampoo. So you will apply it to the areas that uh, have your issues after you've washed your face and let it sit for about 10 minutes and then wash it off. 
but usually um if you don't notice any adverse reaction to it people use it as an ointment so they leave it on overnight and sometimes even use it just as a spot treatment because of all the benefits you can get from it another amazing ingredient that can be helpful for fungal acne is zinc pyrithion and this one is also like a sulfur in the sense that it's both antibacterial and antifungal so it can deal with both traditional acne and fungal acne and the cool thing about it is when you use it topically actually what happens is it's slow release so it works slowly and it's able to go into the follicle and kill the malassezia and it's also a gentle ingredient and so these are what make this particular ingredient quite great i actually found it in one antifungal shampoo that you can find locally called keto plus the keto plus shampoo has both ketoconazole and zinc pyrithione so this is also a great ingredient that is often prescribed to people with traditional acne the great thing about this one as well this ingredient is that the fungi do not develop any resistance to it so as long as you use it you will keep getting rid of your fungal acne which by the way is an annoying condition that tends to recur now other preventive measures is get out of your sweaty clothing straight after your workout if you're not able to shower immediately after a workout make sure that you just at least wipe your face down in any excessively sweaty areas wear breathable clothing so that you're not um, creating a breeding ground for the fungal acne some people have also found that um, a diet higher in sugar can uh, be a cause for an, a fungal acne flare-up so you want to just make sure you're eating healthy um, you know low glycemic index foods and whole foods then for some people, it's uh, it's important for them to use fungal acne safe hair products as well, especially if you tend to get the breakouts like around your forehead, because um, if you use hair products and they tend to like trickle down to your skin, they might cause the fungal acne on your face. So for some people, they'd rather use fungal acne safe hair products as well. Whew. So that is it for the video. I hope that it was helpful i'd love to hear from you do you have fungal acne how are you preventing it is it the first time you're hearing about it leave all your comments down below in the next video i will be talking about my personal experience with fungal acne i just didn't want this video to be too long so i'll talk about how i've been dealing with fungal acne and my updated skincare routine and all of that jazz so again thank you so much for watching Always remember that your hair is your crown and your body is a temple. Embrace it, love it, and take care of it. God bless you all. Bye!